uh, Justice Stephen Breyer will be stepping down effectively uh, at noon on Thursday. That means Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson will take her seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. Of course, this will come as we conclude uh, this current session of the Supreme Court with a lot of pivotal rulings and still some decisions yet to be decided. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the Dobbs decision, which overturns Roe v. Wade. The liberal tears following that decision continue to flow. Uh, last week's ruling, of course, sends the issue of abortion back to the states to figure this out. Doesn't make it illegal. Uh, and the man, Clarence Thomas, uh, well, the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, his haters are running wild with racist tropes. That includes Hillary Clinton. But not all liberals think Clarence Thomas is a danger to our republic. That includes our most liberal justice, Sonia Sotomayor. She doesn't think Clarence Thomas is a person of resentment, grievance, and anger. That's what Hillary Clinton thinks. Listen how Justice Sotomayor proves Hillary Clinton is a liar, right here. Justice Thomas is the one justice in the building that literally knows every employee's name, that they, every one of them. He is a man who keeps, cares deeply about the court as an institution, about the people who work there, but about people. She also said Justice Thomas cares deeply about the integrity of the Supreme Court. Now, in case you forgot, Hillary Rodden Clinton recently appeared on the CBS Morning Show to discuss the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And here's what she said when she was asked about Clarence Thomas. I went to law school with him. Mm -hmm. He's been a, a person of grievance for as long as I've known him. Resentment, grievance, anger. But women are going to die, Gail. Women will die. Hmm. Let's welcome in our panel to talk more about the Clarence Thomas haters out there. D.C. Drano, Rogan O'Hanley is here with us. Also with us, PragerU personality, Amala Epunobi. She's the host of Unapologetic and former California Assemblyman Mike Gatto joined us as well. Mike, I got to start with you. Hillary Clinton is still floating around out there uh, throwing out these racist tropes. She basically called Clarence Thomas an angry black man. Well, I mean, listen, the the amount of uh, harsh commentary and racism that Clarence Thomas has faced recently is unacceptable uh, under any circumstances. Nobody should have to face that. And it has been unnecessarily harsh. But at the same time, I mean, some of his opinions lately have been a little curious, even if you're a curious. supporter of gun rights. Curious. Uh, even if you're a supporter of gun rights, the, the idea that the Supreme Court uh, has to rely on historical arguments instead of the law uh, you know, I think is a is a mistake. Uh, if you care about the future of the court, you care about this opinion because, you know, anybody can claim history is on their side. That's what people have claimed throughout the centuries. History is on my side. But, well, that opinion is very odd, even for people who support the Second Amendment. What Clarence Thomas is saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rogan, because you're the attorney here on the panel. I don't know if you are as well, Mike, but uh, <laughs> but what Clarence Thomas is citing is the Constitution, not historical history or anything. I mean, it's the Constitution that he relies on for all his rulings. Rogan, am I wrong here? Well, let me just say, just because someone is a lawyer doesn't mean they're going to be right. In fact, they're <laughs> usually 50 percent wrong since you have to have someone on both sides. But um, I, I think the reality here is that a lot of people, uh, including even conservatives, are just not used to the Constitution being applied as written. We've had 60, 70 years of a left-leaning court, starting with the FDR era when he threatened to pack the court until they got in line with his New Deal agenda. And it wasn't until really... William, Chief Justice William Rehnquist in the you know, late 80s, early 90s, when the court started to tack back towards the middle, then we had the Kennedy era, and now we have you know, effectively the Justice Thomas Court, and he's an originalist, he's a constitutionalist, and he believes that if you want something to change, go vote for it, or go change the Constitution. But as a judge, you should apply the facts to the law as it, as it is written, as it is simply explained the right to keep and bear arms. Bear arms means carry arms. It's very simple. You don't need a 175 page dissent like Justice Breyer to try and wiggle around that. <laughs> you can just say keep and bear arms. Here it is. So a lot of people just aren't used to that very simple constitutional speak. Going back to, to this, you know, character assassination of Clarence Thomas Amala, uh, a, a man named Brian Griffith, who is now the deputy press secretary for Governor DeSantis in Florida, shared this Twitter thread yesterday talking about his personal experience with Clarence Thomas. He called Hillary Clinton's comments offensive, disgusting, and false. 
He'd like to directly rebut this. He says, after I passed the bar, I think this is in 2015, he says, I stopped Clarence Thomas in the lobby in D.C. and asked him if he would do me, do me the honor of swearing me in as a lawyer. He invited me to his office at the Supreme Court the next day after work and spent hours with me in conversation, earnestly affording me his time and encouraging me. Wow, what a jerk, Amala, spending two hours with a new lawyer, a uh, Supreme Court justice. What a jerk. Right. Yeah. Clarence Thomas is just such a horrible guy. I don't think we needed this Twitter thread directly to prove that Hillary Clinton is a liar. She's got a long <laughs> track enough. record of lying and Fair committing enough. character assassination against anybody who goes against her. But these have been two beautiful moments, this Twitter thread and what Justice Sotomayor had to say. And it, it's really proving that politics aside, we can still have good moral value with people who we disagree with. We can still have longstanding relationships with them and they can still be kind, even mm -hmm. though we view the world a little bit differently, as Sotomayor echo echoed in the statement she made about Clarence Thomas. You know, uh, we can think differently about Roe versus Wade, whether or not it should be overturned, whether or not that's in the Supreme Court's court, uh, but we can still be friends and have relationships with each other and not have to commit these acts of character assassination. Something so important to not lose sight of as we enter all this charge rhetoric now about these Supreme Court cases. All right, let's talk about something that nobody is laughing about. Um, we have some video of Clarence Thomas laughing. I'm not gonna play it because we don't have time, but I love just watching the video, Clarence Thomas laughing. Google it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But this is a story no one's laughing about. Singer R. Kelly is set to be sentenced today on a sex trafficking uh, and racket racketeering charges. He could spend the rest of his life in prison. Prosecutors want a 25-year term, at least. His defense lawyers say 10 years is more appropriate. Now, this is coming just the day after we learned that Ghislaine Maxwell got 20 years in prison for trafficking kids to Jeffrey Epstein, and I guess we'll never know who else was part of that organization. Uh, real quickly around the panel, we'll start with Amala, then Rogan, and then go back to Mike. I mean, is 20 years enough for Ghislaine oh, Maxwell? 20 years is certainly, certainly not enough for what Ghislaine Maxwell was involved in and the crimes that she committed. I mean, we're talking about one of the largest sex trafficking rings with some of the most elite people, not only in American society, but around the world. And the fact that we're not getting a, a keen look at that little black book that listed his client list and the people who were on his flights that she was involved with is completely ridiculous. It seems like this entire endeavor has just been a massive cover up and we will never know who was involved in this sex trafficking ring. Rogan? You know, it's sad that the judge in the Ghislaine Maxwell case was recently promoted to be on the appellate court. So uh, speaks to what is potentially going on in the background here. There certainly is a cover up. The fact that the most powerful people in the world that were her clients are being hidden uh, reeks of corruption. So uh, hopefully over time, more truth will be revealed. Mike, who gets more time in jail, R. Kelly or Ghislaine Maxwell? It should be Ghislaine Maxwell. And the concern with these sentences is not only that they're too short, but it's that people become eligible for sentence reductions and parole and all sorts of things, uh, commutations. We've seen in California where even the fellow who assassinated uh, RFK is coming up for parole time and time again. I mean, it is, it is shocking um, how little the justice system right now focuses on victims and how much it focuses on, um, you know, frankly, giving, giving light sentences to the perpetrators. My God, oh, that's so true. Great point as well. Rogan, Amala, great to see you all. We'll